Climbing these giant sequoias is a very humbling experience. As you're climbing them, you get up close and personal with the tree in a way that you can't from the ground. And it makes you feel very small when you're climbing on these massive things and you, you're climbing and you keep climbing and you keep climbing and you're still not near the top. You feel very insignificant. You have this 2,000 year old tree and you're up in the crown of that thing. You just somehow get absorbed into that tree. And that's a wonderful feeling. It deepens your appreciation for how amazing these organisms are. It just puts your life into perspective, how short our time is on this planet and how beautiful it is, but how important it is to, to make the most of it. Giant sequoias are amazing trees. They can live for thousands of years, and the older they get, the more craggy and individualistic they become as they endure and live through lightning strikes and fires and droughts. And they actually start to create habitat for a lot of other species, birds and insects. Well, the giant sequoias are a bit of a mystery. They're an anomaly from ancient times. There's so much we don't know about giant sequoias. As famous as they are, as iconic as they are, we still don't know some basic fundamental things, like, for example, how deep their roots go. And that's what the research that we're doing right now is trying to understand. Giant sequoias used to be much more widespread throughout the northern hemisphere, but over time, with climatic changes, they've actually become sequestered to a small number of groves restricted to the Sierra Nevada in a pretty narrow elevation band. Most recently, we formed the Ancient Forest Society because we really wanted to make a difference in the conservation of these trees that we've been studying. The climate itself, it's kind of in the red line where we're experiencing desertification. Plants can't pick up and move. We've measured up to 4,000 liters of water moving through the trunk of an individual tree in a single day. And so their enormous need for water makes them a little bit vulnerable in the context of climate change because there's less water available. Giant sequoias are a bit of a paradox. They're used to these fires that we used to have pre-settlement. Modern giant sequoia groves are somewhat threatened by a lack of fire. So for giant sequoias, fire is critical. It's part of their life cycle. These trees are born of fire, and so they, they need that for their regeneration. If a fire comes through, the cones will open up and drop their seed. One of the things that's changed about fire is it's becoming more severe from a combination of fire suppression and logging and also climate change. The landscape is drying out a lot more quickly. In two years alone, in 2020 and 2021, up to 19% of mature giant sequoias died in severe wildfire. One of the really important things that we could do to protect giant sequoia trees is to collect seed so that we have it on hand. The seed is the beginning of life and it's an obvious place to start. The seeds are the genetic future of these trees. There might be a need in the future to plant them elsewhere that might be more suitable climate for them going in the, into the future. To start out with a seed collection, one of the first things that we'll do is we'll visit the site, verifying that there are sufficient seeds and enough trees to provide enough genetic diversity. We wanted to make sure that the trees were far enough apart so that they weren't cross-pollinating. You know, the work that we're doing climbing these really massive trees is really physically demanding and that's definitely a challenge, uh, being able to get up into the crowns of these trees, hiking to really remote groves, carrying heavy loads. We use a crossbow to establish our first entry into the trees. So we shoot a fiberglass rod up over a nice big branch that we can see from the ground using our binoculars. It went right over the branch and that's trailing fishing line. So it's kind of like, you know, fishing for a big tree. And after that, we'll pull in our access cord, which is then strong enough to pull up our ropes. We climb up the rope with double rope technique. I do have a healthy respect for the fact that I am working on rope at a great enough height to really hurt myself. Safety is one of our top priorities in everything that we do. 
Once you get up to the top of the tree, you begin the collection. We focus on collecting seed from the top third of the canopy, and we're only taking two bushels from each tree. We want to make sure that we don't collect more than 10% of the seeds there. And then we have a ground crew who go through the seed and make sure that things look good. They do cut tests on the cones to make sure that the embryos are mature and that the quality of the seed we're getting is, is high enough. These cones will go to the LA Moran Reforestation Center in Davis, California, and they'll be processed and the seed will be cleaned and then that seed will be banked and that banking is for future generations. It was just amazing that we were able to partner with One Tree Planted to make this program a reality. And ensure that we have the genetic material put away for future generations. Giant sequoias, just their very presence is inspiring to people around the world. There are people who come from all over the place to come and see these amazing living cathedrals. They just provide so many different benefits to humans.